The new Yezu FTX-1 radio, both the FTX-1 field model, which is what this is right here. This is the field model. And then the amplifier that attaches to it. Highly debated, highly talked about, hot topic radio of the day. This is five things that I like about this radio. Let's go. I spoke about five things that I thought were wrong with this radio, and I wanted to do that video first because, as I told you in that video, I've seen a couple of Instagram or Twitter posts and a couple of YouTube videos of pe about people saying, hey, all of the YouTubers are praising this radio because Yezu's paying him to do it. Trust me, I wish that were true. I wish I could get paid to make a video about a radio that I really, really enjoyed. But Yezu's not paying me. Icom's never paid me. Kenwood's never paid me. So, and and quite frankly, it's probably, it's, it's a good thing. I, I, I joke about getting paid. Who doesn't want to get paid? But realistically, it's a better thing that I don't get paid by these guys because I can give a more honest review. I bought this with my own money and I'm giving honest reviews and honest feedback about it. So, I did five things that were wrong with it to kind of, negate the theory that, oh, I, I can't say anything bad about it because uh, I'd lose my rights to Yezu or I'd lose something or I, I'd go against the sponsor. No, Yezu doesn't sponsor me, so no, in, incorrect. But today, I'm going to talk about five things I really do like about this radio because it is not a complete failure in my opinion. So I don't want to make a video about stuff that's wrong with it without making a video about stuff that is right with it. So let's go. The first thing that you actually, that you really, really need to understand about this unit is that it has this uh, AESS speaker system on it. The speaker down here at the bottom, these ports down here at the bottom is a speaker. And if you own a Yezu FT510 or a five uh, FTM500, or the new um, 710 HF radio, you probably have experienced some of the uh, auto or acoustic enhanced speaker system, I think is what it is, whatever AESS stands for. But this thing has a fantastic speaker. The speaker on this thing is just absolutely great. You can take this to a park and you can set it up on a table and you can turn the speaker all the way up or maybe halfway up. It doesn't even need to be that loud, but you turn it all the way up and it does not distort. So if anyone's that hard of hearing, then maybe we should be talking about something else right now. But you can turn it up along all the way up, and it does not distort. And then you can walk away from it. And uh, we did some tests with this at Memorial Day at Galveston Island State Park. Uh, Mike and I were there. He had, he had one of these, too. I had the Optima model. He had the field model. And turn the volume about 50 to 60% volume, and then just kind of walk out of the pavilion, just keep walking towards the beach and see how far it can go. And I'm like, man, I can still hear it, and it still sounds good. So the speaker system on this radio is fantastic. It is second to none. Yezu has done a bang-up job with, this, with the uh, AESS speaker system on their newest dual-band VHF, UHF radios, and on the uh, FT710, if you have the external speaker for it, and now on this FTX1. So that's definitely a plus in my book. Number two is that this radio actually has an APRS system. Now, you can see the APRS menus here. This is in, if you if you hold down this button right here, this function knob, you go into the deep menu, and then you can press these. I'm doing this backwards on the screen. You can press back right here. Okay, that's the first menu you get to, and then you press forward over here. Menu three in the menu system, and you can see APRS right there. So this radio... Unlike the competitor of this radio, which shall remain nameless for the moment, although I'm going to talk about it here in a minute, actually does APRS. And I'm sorry, but I think any radio that does APRS, I think that's an excellent feature. Just the other day I was asked by somebody, and this is not the first time I've been asked this question, what HT radio should I get? Should I get the ICOM ID52A, their latest and greatest flagship HT radio, or should I get the new Kenwood D75, their latest and greatest flagship HT radio? And I said, I prefer the D75, not only because it has 220, so it's actually a tri-band radio, but because it has APRS. And I like APRS, and the menus in that Kenwood radio are fantastic. The menus in this radio are a little bit quirky, but they're kind of, if you're used to Yezu menus, then you won't find any any hard part about it. But the fact that this radio has APRS is a win in my book. I wish more radios had APRS. I wish manufacturers, some of them, would stop ignoring APRS. I think APRS is a 
very fun and vital tool to the amateur radio community, and I, I wish more people used it. When I'm on road trips, I'm always beaconing APRS, and the fact that this one has APRS means that it, it, it gets an, a thumbs up from that in my book. Speaking of menus, the th number three, the menu system. Now, some people will say Yezu's menu systems are not great. Okay, once you get used to it, just like anything else, once you get used to it, it's not a big deal. If you've used an FTDX10 or an FT710, you're going to be able to easily navigate through the menu system in this radio because they're so similar. It's so similar to its predecessors. This is the third HF radio that has a menu system similar to um, previous HF radios. Again, I'm trying to do this backwards. Okay, so there's your, there's your main screen right there. And you can change the display to go to dual display. That's another thing. That's something. Here, here's a bonus for you. This one will have, has dual display. Now, it doesn't have full duplex dual receive as we were told it would originally. But it does have a dual display. So it's a little bit easier to switch back and forth between A band and B band, in my opinion. But regardless of that for the moment. In order to get into the menu system, you simply touch this knob right here. You long press this knob. It goes into the menu system, and you've got three pages of menus. The APRS right there is on page three. So you've got three pages of menus from there, and then you can use the function knob to kind of navigate through there. And you see I'm on tone right there. I'm just going to pick one. I'm on tone right there. Actually, you know what? Let's go back here. I'm going to go to power. I'm going to go to... Uh, that's a little bit less glare on the screen there, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Transmit power. RF power right there. So now we're now I can do this. So we're at 6 watts of power, which is the max power because we're on uh, battery power right now. I'm going to come out of the menu, and now if I want to still move this function knob, it's still going to change my power. So whatever menu option you were on the last time you was in the menu, that's what this knob does. If I wanted to choose tone for encode, decode for um, 2 meters and 440, if I wanted to choose a writ, or if I wanted to choose something else in the menu... Um, Pretty much anything else in the menu. Any of these items right here. If I wanted to change that, turn the attenuator off and on, turn the amp off and the receive amp off and on, tw turn the noise blanker off and on. Okay, noise blanker off, noise blanker five. Okay, good. So now we're going to go down here and hit back, get out of the menu, and now I've got a noise blanker control in this knob right here. So this is a quick access for whatever menu you accessed last time in the in the menu system and that's exactly how the latest HF radios from Yezu work. I like it. I, f I think it's a good tool because it is a familiar menu system. Once you get used to the menu system, if you've had a previous radio, it's good to keep that going. So it's easier to navigate this radio if you have a previous Yezu radio, a later model Yezu radio, than it would be if you just were to completely change the menu system have to start over from scratch the 891 menu system is a good example of that the 891 menu system matches nothing and the deep menus are kind of tricky to get around in and there's no other yezu radio where they uh, like the menu system in the 891 so you always kind of have to reteach yourself how to get to certain things in the 891 every time you use it number four is going to be that this radio is basically two radios in one now think about it think about any time you've bought a qrp radio a lot of people in comments on my videos have said that they would love to see an update to the IC7300, which I agree with this point, an update to the IC7300, let's call it the IC7350, okay? And basically, it's a 705 that's 100 watts. So you take the IC705 and all the great features it has, 2 meters, 440, D-Star, if you like D-Star, I don't really care about D-Star, but okay. 2 meters, 440, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, you take all of that, you add it to a 100-watt HF radio, and now you've got a very full-featured 100-watt radio with, uh, with, with all of the stuff that basically combines the IC705 and the IC7300, okay? Well, that's kind of what Yezu has done here because they make that amplifier to attach to the back of the FTX-1, and that's a great design. I think that's a great design. It's a little bit wonky to, to taking it off is easy. To getting it back on there, it's a little bit wonky. You got to make sure it's lined up and make sure this is here. And I've already talked about the BNC ports on the back of the head. I did that in the last video. I'll link that up in here somewhere. But the fact that it's so easy and made to mate to a 100-watt amplifier 
is a great idea. I mean, it's kind of like the essence of an Elecraft radio because you could you could buy a K2 or a, yeah, K2 back in the day or when the K3 first came out, I think they were you could buy kits that were 10 watts and you would add a 100 watt amplifier later. That that's what this is. This is this is a QRP radio with a 100 watt add-on that's made to mate it together to make them so you've got incredible versatility with a system like that. I think that's a great tool. I would like to see more stuff like that from Yezu in the future or from other even other manufacturers in the future because having a 100 watt amplifier right there next to your think about if you had a 100 watt amplifier that would just click onto the back of the 705. I mean, there's an idea. Hello Icom. I mean, I'm I bet they've thought of that already. Okay, I don't think this is new information for anybody. I think, you know, everybody wants a 100-watt IC705. So I think this that's probably not new information at all. But Yezu was the first one to do it. I think it's a good step in the right direction. I think it's uh, innovative, and I think, I'm, I think, I hope, I hope is the better word. I hope we're going to see more of that in the future. Now, if you want more power than 100 watts... You need to check out SBE Expert Amplifiers at Main Trading Company. I'll put a link in the description below. SBE Amplifiers are made in Italy. They're fantastic, high-quality amplifiers. And Main Trading Company became the North American distributor of Expert Amplifiers sometime late last year. And now they have repair facilities in Florida and in California. I think there's one on the West Coast and one on the East Coast. Yeah, Florida, one on the West Coast somewhere. And... Uh, there's talk of about a new one being a, in the Midwest somewhere as well. So if you ever have any trouble with your amplifier, you no longer have to send it back to Italy. But it's kind of rare to have trouble with those amplifiers anyway. SBE Expert is sponsoring this video. You guys check out the link in the description below. And if you talk to Richard at Main Trading Company, tell him thank you for sponsoring this channel. Point number five, the final point of today's video, is the battery on this radio. Now, I know I said earlier... I said in the last video that the battery was, it's great that it's USB-C, but it, it, it takes kind of a beefy power source to power the battery, which is absolutely true. You got to have a really beefy power source to power this battery, but it is USB-C chargeable, so you're not poking around for an extra plug or some sort of proprietary connection or something. Okay, so you can charge the battery on the battery itself. You can charge the battery through the USB-C port on the radio, and... The battery lasts an incredible long time. They estimate that this battery will last you about 10 to 11 hours in the field. I think that's mostly with, with receive. So obviously, the more you transmit, the more it's going to run it down. It's going to run it down quicker the more you transmit. But it's only 6 watts it's transmitting from. There was some talk early on with the IC705 about the battery. I put an extended battery, a larger battery on my IC705, and it made it last a little bit longer. But there's no way either one of those batteries on the 705 would last 10 hours. It just... That just doesn't happen. It's just, and how many, how many times have we said, oh, ICOM should have put USB-C in their radio because it's micro USB in the IC705. And that's just indicative of how many years ago the 705 came out. That's all that means. It's nothing wrong with it. There is a conversion kit where you can convert the micro USB to a USB-C in the 705, but it doesn't really, it doesn't give it any USB-C capability. In other words, it doesn't do fast charging. It doesn't do power delivery. All it means is that you no longer have to carry a micro USB cable with you and you can use the same cable that you use on your phone or radio or camera or whatever else you're doing there. So it makes it a little bit more universal, but it does not give you the benefits of having USB-C in the first place. But this is a USB-C battery. It's removable pretty easily. You just take it off the back here and you can charge it while it's off the radio. You can run the radio from a 12 volt power source right here while your battery's charging, put the battery back on, even have a spare battery for it. And I just, I think that this this big beefy battery, and it does make it a little bit heavier, and I talked about that in the last video as well, but I think a 10 hour battery on the back of a radio is an awesome, awesome concept because if you were to actually take this somewhere and camp with it overnight, you would probably be able to operate most of the night on this battery. Six watts, do an FT8, maybe some CW, and then charge it back up via USB, uh, USB-C because hopefully you've got one of those gigaparts boxes with the 65 watt power distribution or power delivery, sorry, power delivery port on it. And I talked about where to get that power delivery port in another video that I did about Amazon products earlier too. So what do you guys like about this radio? I'd like to know, I already did a video about what I didn't like about it. 
And I could probably add a few things to that video of stuff that I don't like. I could probably add three or four things. And I could probably add three or four things to this video of stuff that I do like. I said at the beginning of some video somewhere, I don't remember, I made a lot of videos on YouTube, go figure. I said at the beginning of some video that there's no such thing as a perfect radio. Every radio has good pros and cons, bad, good and bad features. So today I'm looking for you to tell me in the comments what is a good feature you like about this radio. What is a good feature about it? Put a comment below. Check out all the links in the description below as well, and we'll catch you guys next time.